as I watch the price of gold finally get back up to $1,900 an ounce. We've got silver prices now about $28 an ounce, and it's been a long, hard grind for gold to get back up to $1,900. And I know along the way, a lot of people have been expressing some frustration by gold's failure to make an even bigger move faster. Well, I want to assure everybody that I think your days of frustration will soon come to an end and I think vindication is around the corner because I do believe a major move up in both the price of gold and silver is eminent. And in fact, to the extent that people still have cash on the sideline that they are yet to commit to the market, I would not wait. I suggest that everybody have a full position. So whatever you feel your allocation is gonna be, to physical gold and silver, my suggestion is that you fully allocate now. Don't wait for lower prices because you're probably gonna be waiting indefinitely because I doubt they're gonna get much lower. In fact, I expect them to get much higher. And not only do I expect the price of gold and silver, the metal to go much higher, but I believe the premiums on the coins and bars will also go much higher. So I think the sooner that you can buy, the cheaper you're gonna be able to get your gold and silver and the more gold and silver you'll end up owning. You know, part of the frustration I think that people have expressed is that they look at the inflation. They see these big increases in prices and they don't see a corresponding rise in the price of gold. And again, people get frustrated, especially when they were staring at these huge increases in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies that caused a lot of people to start to question gold or maybe second guess its status as an inflation hedge, thinking maybe that Bitcoin had stolen its thunder and that gold is no longer the inflation hedge that it was because it's been replaced by Bitcoin. Well, that is not true. And I'll get to Bitcoin in a minute. But the real reason that gold was not responding even stronger despite this huge increase in inflation is that the vast majority of the investing community that did not expect this inflation and they are completely surprised by what is happening they also expect the federal reserve to be able to solve the problem before it really gets started in fact the federal reserve is convincing everybody that there's nothing to worry about because whatever inflation they're experiencing or witnessing is transitory. Well, to me, I've heard this song and dance before because it is eerily familiar to what the Federal Reserve did back in 2007 when facing the subprime mortgage crisis. Because I had been forecasting this crisis for years I knew that the Fed had inflated a housing bubble. I understood the structure completely, and I also knew the financial crisis that was going to ensue once the bubble popped. And so when the subprime crisis hit in 2007, for me, that's what I knew for sure that all my years of warning were correct. I mean, I thought I was right, but I didn't actually have the proof that I was right until subprime blew up. The problem was, even though it should have been obvious, the Fed still ignored the signs. And in fact, the Fed went out of its way to convince everybody that what they were seeing in subprime uh, was contained. It was a small problem. It was isolated to just one part of the mortgage market and that it wouldn't spill over into the overall mortgage market. And of course, it wouldn't affect the U.S. economy at all. Well, we all know how that turned out. The Fed couldn't have been more wrong uh, if it did so intentionally. And in fact, maybe the Fed did intentionally mislead the public. They were so worried about the mortgage problem that they lied and pretended it was contained. The same thing is probably happening now with inflation. The coming inflation crisis is going to be far worse than the financial crisis. And so now the Fed is do again telling everybody, that there's nothing to worry about, that all these prices that are going up, this is all transitory, that the prices are gonna come back down, 
and so they got nothing to worry about. Well, inflation is a transitory today as subprime was contained. But again, everybody believes the Fed now the way they believe the Fed then, and they also feel that even if the Fed is wrong and inflation turns out to be a bigger problem than they believe, well, the Fed has the tools to solve it with tightening monetary policy. In fact, everybody expects the Fed to be tightening monetary policy because after all, the COVID emergency is over, the economy is reopening, we're getting back to normal, and so it's time to normalize monetary policy. The Fed now has to raise interest rates, they have to start uh, tapering their asset purchase program, ultimately shrinking their balance sheet, and it is the anticipation of either a successful fight against inflation or the mere normalization of monetary policy that has been a big headwind for gold because everybody believes that a rising uh, interest rate environment is going to be bearish for gold and so the markets are discounting the effect of higher interest rates today. Well, soon the markets are gonna discover that they're completely wrong. First of all, inflation is not transitory at all. Inflation is permanent and it's going to get much, much worse. And B, the Fed can't do anything about it. The Fed is all bark and no bite when it comes to inflation fighting. It has no ability to fight inflation because it has created such a massive credit bubble. There is now so much debt in the system, thanks to the Fed, that if the Fed were to raise interest rates to fight inflation, they would collapse the entire house of cards economy that they've been erecting over the years. And so they're not going to do that. And so the Fed may talk about fighting inflation, but they're never actually going to fight because they would lose. So in fact, they're going to surrender without a fight. And there is no normalization coming for monetary policy. In fact, the Fed is actually going to be throwing gasoline on the inflationary fire because we are going to have stagflation. This recovery that everybody is talking about is a myth. We haven't recovered from anything. All we're doing is spending the money the Fed prints. But because the Fed has printed so much money for us to spend, the price of everything that we want to buy is going through the roof. And so when the markets come to term with this reality, then the price of gold is just going to go ballistic. And before it does, you want to buy as much gold and silver as you can. Oh, and by the way, the crypto bubble has already popped. Bitcoin has crashed from $65,000 an ounce a couple of weeks ago uh, or to 30, 31,000, uh, not an ounce per coin a couple of weeks ago. Now it got as low as about 31,000 uh, recently. I think it's a long way down. I think the bubble has popped. At one point, I thought 20,000 was gonna be the high but they managed to create an even bigger move up and take out that high. But at this point, I think the odds that are that the party is over. I think some of the institutions that came late to the party are already looking to leave. And I think those other institutions that were thinking about joining are glad that they didn't and they're gonna look away. In fact, I think this whole movement that we're seeing uh, in the investment market where people are moving out of momentum type stocks into value stocks. The same thing is happening now with Bitcoin and gold. People are going to be moving away from fool's gold and buying the real thing. Uh, Bitcoin has lost all that momentum and gold is regaining the center stage because the entire time Bitcoin bubble has been deflating, gold has been quietly moving higher and higher and higher in obscurity. Lot, not a lot of intention being paid to the gold market. This is the lull before the storm. People are still excited and focused on a bubble that's already popped and they're missing a bull market that is in its infancy. In fact, somebody the other day had asked me, why is it that every asset out there is in a bubble except gold? And I think a lot of people are asking the same question. Well, the answer is because gold is the money by which everything else is overpriced. The reason that gold is not in a bubble is because everything else is in a bubble in terms of gold. Gold is the stable store of value. Gold is real money. It's a safe haven. And during bubbles and manias, everybody wants to buy the risk assets. 
that's where they're getting rich, whether it's in stocks, in real estate, in collectibles, or even cryptocurrencies, whatever people are buying, it's in a bubble in terms of gold. And I expect all of those bubbles to pop, the air to come out, but the way I expect them to deflate is not with their dollar price going down, but with the gold price going up. That's how all these bubbles are gonna pop. The price of everything is gonna crash when expressed in gold and silver. And so what you want to do in advance of the deflation of the everything bubble is to own the asset that everything is going to be deflated against, and that is real money, that is gold and silver.